What is up everyone? My name is Joseph and welcome back to Casual Competitive MTG. Now, just so you know, things may look a little bit different in this video. We're working on a few different things to smooth out our production cycle. Things have just been really busy for us lately, so we're trying to do what we can to make sure these videos can still come out on a timely basis while not taking too much time in production. So for this video, we kind of had the overlay live while we recorded and we had the cards pop up on screen there. So you may notice some things that are a little bit different. Let us know your thoughts, but we are going to continue in the next few videos to do what we can to try to make the production process as easy as possible but we'll keep you updated with any changes that we make. That being said, with how we're doing it in this video, we are able to record our gameplay and cut it up so the live commentary versions of the games are going to be uploaded to Patreon for the $5 tier and above. So if you want to check out this game with the player's live commentary, check that out. In addition to that, we also have another video of this same pod going up on Patreon for the $5 and above tier. So if you liked this video and you want to be another of this pod, check out our Patreon. And while you're there, if you want to help support us this month's $20 tier, where we have some merchandise available, we have a holographic sticker of one of our logo designs, as well as some token designs available if you do want to help us out in that way. We do appreciate everyone who helps us out in this way, and if you'd like to help support us, that'd be a great way to do that. And while we're talking about promotions, in the description we have an Alter Sleeves affiliate link, where if you click on that link and make any purchase, you directly help out the channel. So if you're looking to pick up some unique looking art for your cards without having to get your cards physically altered, be sure to check out Alter Sleeves. Also, we have a TCG affiliate link where if you click on that link, any purchase you make directly helps out the channel at no cost to you. We also have a Flipside Gaming affiliate link where if you use our code CASUALLYMTG on eligible purchases, you'll not only help out the channel, but also receive a nice discount as well. That being said, with the promotions out of the way, let's get into the opening hands and deck introductions. Adam went first in this game, playing the partner commanders Jessica Thrice Reborn and Ishai Ojitai Dragon Speaker. Now, there is an infinite mana combo in this deck, including Isochron Scepter and Dramatic Reversal and some mana rocks to generate infinite mana, and then there's some outlets as well. But the real fun one, and I use fun very loosely as someone who played against this deck, is playing Ishai early to get value off of opponents playing spells and then dealing triple damage with Jessica's ability. It's actually surprisingly strong, and outside of that, Jessica is just a very strong strong control piece that can clear the board of mana dorks on a regular basis. Adam's opening hand contained a Plains, a Bloodstained Mire, an Enlightened Suitor, a Dispel, an Izzet Signet, a Mana Drain, and an Avon Mind Sensor. Going second is Jordan playing Calamax the Storm Sire. This is a storm-based list that looks to win using the card Brain Freeze and Underworld Breach to essentially mill out his opponents, or take infinite turns using Isochron Scepter, Narset's Reversal, and Nexus of Fate to just constantly loop turns. Jordan's opening hand contained an Exotic Orchard, a Stomping Ground, a River Glide Pathway, a Wild Growth, a Nature's Lore, a Manamorphose, and a Thrill of Possibility. Going third is myself, Joseph, playing Cole the Forge Master. This is a really interesting Boros commander that has a lot of unique lines, the primary one being Dockside Extortionist, Mask of Immolation, and Cole in order to kill Dockside with Mask of Immolation, ping an opponent, and since it was equipped, it gets returned to your hand due to Cole's ability, and then you just replay it, get more treasures, and repeat the process. There are quite a few other equipment-based win cons in this deck, and overall, it's a fairly explosive and unique list in Boros. My opening hand contained a Mountain, two Plains, Rograk, Mana Vault, Gamble, and a Simeon Spirit Guide. And finally going last is Bill, playing Selvala Explorer Returned, playing a deck style known as Twiddlestorm. There are quite a few cards in this deck that are used to combo off, but a lot of them revolve around using Selvala's ability to draw his library and generate a massive amount of mana, and then win with the cards that he's drawn. Bill's opening hand contained a Forest, a Wirewood Lodge, Walking Ballista, Draga Tree Speaker, Birds of Paradise, Savine's Reclamation, and an Eldritch Evolution. Remember, if you want to watch these games live, check out our Twitch channel, link is in the description. And now with the opening hands out of the way, let's get into the gameplay. Adam started off this game by drawing, playing a Plains as his land, and then passing the turn to Jordan. Jordan draws, plays a Snow-Covered Forest, and then for a green mana casts a Wild Growth, enchanting his Forest. With nothing left, he passes to Joseph. Joseph draws, plays a mountain as his land, and then for zero mana, casts Rograk. He then for a red mana, casts Gamble, tutoring a card to his hand and discarding a runaway Steamkin at random. He then exiles a Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand for a red mana to cast a Mana Vault, and with a turn one completed, he passes the turn to Bill. Bill draws, plays a forest, and then for a green mana, casts a Birds of Paradise. 
He then goes to pass on his end step. Adam casts an Enlightened Tutor. He searches up a Mana Crypt to the top of his library and then goes to his turn. On his turn, he untaps, plays a Bloodstained Mire Asses Land for turn, and then pays one life to crack it to shock in a Steam Vents. He then for zero mana casts a Mana Crypt and then taps that Mana Crypt for an Is It Signet. He then taps out completely to cast one of his two partner commanders, Jessica Thrice Reborn. It enters with one loyalty and he then activates the negative one ability to deal one damage to Rograk, one damage to Birds of Paradise, and one damage to Jordan's face. With nothing left, Adam passes to Jordan. Jordan untaps, plays an exotic orchard as his land, and then taps his mana to cast a nature's lore. He searches up a breeding pool to the battlefield and pays two life to have it enter untapped. With nothing left, he passes to Joseph. Joseph untaps, plays a plains, and then taps her two mana to cast his commander, Cole the Forge Master. He then casts Skull Clamp, floating two mana from Mana Vault, and he uses this two floating to help equip Skull Clamp to his commander. He then, with nothing left, passes the turn to Bill. Bill untaps, plays a plains as his land, and then for a green mana casts a land of war elves, and with nothing left, he passes to Adam. Adam untaps and in his upkeep loses his mana crypt trigger, taking 3 damage. He then in his first main phase taps his mana to cast his other partner commander, Ishai Ojutai Dragon Speaker. He then pays 2 life to have a hollowed fountain come in untapped, and with nothing left, he passes to Jordan. Jordan untaps and starts his turn off by shocking in a stomping ground, losing 2 life. He then taps his mana to cast his commander, Kalamax the Stormsire, and when it's cast, Ishai gets a counter. In response to the initial cast, Adam casts a Mana Drain, countering the Kalamax. With nothing left and with his commander not on the battlefield, Jordan passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps and in his draw step takes 1 damage from Mana Vault remaining tapped. He then immediately goes to combat and swings 3 damage at Adam. Adam takes the damage and in his second main phase, Joseph plays a Plains as his land for turn and then taps his mana to cast an Imperial Recruiter. The Recruiter resolves and he searches a Crimson Kobolds to his hand. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Bill. Bill untaps, plays a Wirewood Lodge as his land for turn and then taps his mana to cast his commander, Silvala Explorer Returned. When it's cast, Ishai gets a counter and Bill with nothing left, passes the turn to Adam. Adam untaps and in his upkeep wins his mana crypt trigger, not taking any damage. He then in his first main phase gets 4 mana from Mana Drain and he then plays a Plains as his land for turn and uses this mana to help recast his commander Jessica. Jessica this time enters with 3 loyalty and he activates her negative X ability to target Cole, Imperial Recruiter, and Llanowar Elves, each with 1 damage. In response to this activation, Jordan for a green mana casts a Nature's Claim targeting Joseph's Skull Clamp. On cast, Ishai gets another counter, and then the Skull Clamp is destroyed, Joseph gains 4 life, and Jessica's ability then resolves, killing the Recruiter and the Lantern War Elves. Adam then goes to combat and swings Ishai at Jordan for 4 total damage. With nothing left, Adam passes to Jordan. Jordan untaps, plays a River Glide Pathway as his land for turn, and then taps his mana to attempt to recast his commander. On cast, Ishai gets another counter, and this time Kalamax resolves. Jordan, with nothing left, passes to Joseph. Joseph untaps and in his draw step loses one life due to Mana Vault remaining tapped. He then in his first main phase casts Lightning Greaves. On cast, Ishai gets another counter, and he then equips his Greaves to his commander. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Bill. Bill untaps and starts his turn off by activating Selval's ability to have everyone parlay. Joseph reveals a Gemstone Caverns, Bill a Green Sun Zenith, Adam a Baron Master Wizard, and Jordan a Talisman of Curiosity. This gains Bill 3 life and adds 3 mana to his mana pool. He uses one of this green mana to activate Wirewood Lodge in order to untap his commander, and he reactivates Selvala to have everyone parlay again. This time, Joseph reveals a Mox Amber, Bill a Wirewood Symbiote, Adam a Dramatic Reversal, and Jordan a Preordain. This gains Bill 4 life, adds 4 green mana, and then everybody draws those cards. Bill then uses his floating mana to cast a Green Sun Zenith X equaling 5. On cast, Ishai gets yet another counter, and in response to the Green Sun Zenith, Adam flashes out an Avon Mind Sensor. The Avian Mind Sensor resolves, and Bill looks at the top 4 cards of his library and fails to find a creature that matches the requirements. He then casts a Benefactor's Draft, and on cast, Ishai again triggers. Is untap Silvala and Bill retap Silvala to parlay once more. Joseph reveals a Wheel of Misfortune, Bill a Plains, Adam an Island, and Jordan a Birds of Paradise. 
This gains Bill two life and adds two green mana to his mana pool. He then plays a Plains Asses Land for turn and then taps his mana to cast a Wirewood Symbiote. Again, Ishai triggers off of this cast. Bill then casts a Draga Tree Speaker, getting Ishai another counter, and Bill then bounces his Draga Tree Speaker to his hand with Wirewood's ability to untap Selvala. He then, one more time, activates Selvala to have everyone parlay. Joseph reveals a Prismatic Vista, Bill an Enlightened Suitor, Adam a Smothering Tithe, and Jordan a Veil of Summer. This gains Bill 3 life and adds 3 green mana to his mana pool, and he then uses this mana to help cast an Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing his Wirewood Symbiote as an additional cost, attempting to find something. Ishai gets yet another counter, and Bill looks at the top 4 cards of his library and finds a Finthorn Elves and puts it onto the battlefield. At this point, Bill can parlay no longer and has to just pass the turn to Adam. Adam untaps and in his upkeep wins his mana crypt trigger, taking no damage, and he then plays an island as his land for turn. He then taps his mana to cast a Smothering Tithe. This resolves and he then activates Jessica's plus zero ability, targeting Ishai to triple its damage. He then goes to combat and swings Ishai at Jordan for 33 commander damage. Jordan has no responses, takes the damage, and dies to the commander damage. Adam with nothing left passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps and in his draw step takes a damage from Mana Vault remaining tapped. On his draw, he decides to not pay for Smothering Tithe, and he then pays a Prismatic Vista as his land for turn. He immediately pays one life to crack his Prismatic Vista, searching the top four and finding a basic mount into the battlefield. He then for zero mana casts a Mox Amber, getting Ishai a counter, and then casts a Crimson Cobalt, getting Ishai another counter. He then taps his mana to cast a Wheel of Misfortune, trying to wheel either himself or Bill into some kind of answer. Ishai, obviously, gets another counter, and in response to the Wheel of Misfortune, Adam cracks his treasures to cast a Swan Song, countering the Wheel of Misfortune. In response to the Swan Song, Bill casts an Enlightened Tutor, triggering Ishai, and when it resolves, he searches the top four cards of his library, finding a Kenrish transformation and putting it on the top. The wheel is then countered and Joseph finishes his turn by casting a Sensei's Divining Top, pumping up Ishai a little bit more. Before passing the turn, he equips the Kobold with his Lightning Greaves, and then Bill goes to his turn. On his turn, he untaps and for his draw pays for the Smothering Tithe trigger, and starts his turn off by casting his Kenrith transformation, targeting Ishai. Ishai gets another counter, and the enchantment then resolves, and Ishai is turned into an elk. Just so you know, it is still his commander, and it still does have all of the counters, but it's at least no longer flying. Bill draws a card off of this resolution and does not pay for Smothering Tithe, and he then activates his commander to have everyone parlay. Joseph reveals a Dockside Extortionist, Bill a Wooded Bastion, and Adam a Lightning Bolt. This gains Bill 2 life and adds 2 green mana to his mana pool, and neither Joseph nor Bill pay for their Smothering Tithe triggers. Bill then plays his Wooded Bastion as his land for turn, and he then filters mana into this Wooded Bastion to make a white and a green mana. He then activates Wirewood Lodge to untap Selvala, and reactivates to have everyone parlay again. Joseph reveals a Draneth Magistrate, Bill a Heliod Sun Crowned, and Adam a Phantasmal Image. This gains Bill 3 life and adds 3 mana to his mana pool, and with this mana, he casts a Jiraga Tree Speaker and a Fey Burrow Elder. With nothing left, Bill passes to Adam. Adam untaps and again in his upkeep, wins his mana crypt trigger. He then activates Jessica's negative X ability to deal 2 damage to the Swan Token, the Fey Burrow Elder, and the Jiraga Tree Speaker. He then recasts his commander Jessica, who this time enters with 5 loyalty. He activates Jessica's negative zero ability, targeting Ishai to triple its damage. He then swings his elked beefed up commander at Bill for 48 commander damage. Bill has no blockers, takes the damage, and then loses to this commander damage. He then goes to pass the turn to Joseph, and on Adam's end step, Joseph pays one mana into his sensei's divining top to rearrange the top three cards. Joseph then goes to his turn, untaps, loses one life from Mana Vault due to it being remained tapped in his draw step, draws a card for turn, and does not pay for Smothering Tithe. He then casts a Soul Ring, triggering Ishai since the Kenrith's transformation is now gone and Ishai gets another counter. He then activates his top to rearrange the top three cards of his library, and then casts a Dockside Extortionist, again pumping up Ishai. In response to this, Adam cracks his treasure for a red mana, and Dockside then enters the battlefield, making three treasures. 
Joseph activates Greaves to unequip it from Cobalt and re-equip it to Dockside, and in response to this, Adam uses his floating red mana to cast a Lightning Bolt, targeting the Dockside Extortionist. The Dockside Extortionist dies, and Joseph then equips his Greaves to his commander and goes to combat and swings Cole at Adam for 2 damage. He then plays a Gemstone Caverns as his land for turn, and taps his mana to cast a Dranith Magistrate, again pumping up Ishai. With nothing left and with the end in sight, he passes to Adam. Adam untaps and again, because he has the best relationship with a mana crypt I've ever seen, wins his mana crypt trigger in his upkeep. He then activates Jessica's plus zero ability to triple Ishai's damage and swings 54 commander damage in the air at Joseph. Joseph has no responses, takes the damage, and Adam then wins the game. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Remember, if you like this pod and want to watch another gameplay video of this pod, check out our Patreon where we have a game two available. But that is all we have for you for this video. Again, we hope you did enjoy it. I am Joseph. This is Casually Competitive MTG, and we will see you next time.